memorials, war memorials in particular, you know, Australia has more war memorials per head of capita than any other country in the world. And the reason, I guess, for that is that um, it, it's about identity, it's about, I guess, Australia finding its identity through some kind of formal structure, uh, in part. So one of the things that we did in terms of approaching this was to go back to architectural basics in, in many ways and be very earthy about it, use a very kind of uh, reduced palette of materials. So essentially you've got two things, two uh, objects. objects in the landscape um, that reflect <coughs> one, one memorialises World War One and the other memorialises World War Two, And so they are rammed earth obelisks that you can enter. And so they're kind of carved out spaces within the earth. So this here is a kind of a sectional model um, of, of you know, it's a kind of com combination of both. So it goes below the earth. This is, you, know, you enter in here, go into that space and uh, you look up or down. So it's very much about the uh, experience of that internal space and the external, external space. But um, I guess getting back to the uh, global trends, um, it's one gets very close to the materiality in this and um, the walls and the, the kind of enclosure as well as the object in the landscape. Um, and you could perhaps read that in, in many ways about Australian architecture, uh, Australian buildings that are kind of vertical elements in a kind of horizontal landscape. Um, and I guess pre-1914, or thereabouts, as, a, as an arbitrary kind of thing that Cool House has set, uh, you've got you know much less of a, a palette of materials and so you're responding um, as, a, as an architect or a builder to what materials you have available and that's uh, and how you arrange them in, uh, is response to climate and other kind of patterns of development but I guess you know that sets a, uh, a formal characteristic and so this doesn't do that in the same way, but we were kind of interested in, in taking soil from various places and having an engagement with the actual material of the earth. Um, and so it's, it's kind of an exaggerated expression. It was, so it's the result of a competition. So there was a, an international competition for two, uh, memorial elements, so it's one memorial with, with two elements uh, at the ends of Anzac Parade in um, Canberra, um, one for World War One, and one for World War Two, And so we like to enter competitions and um, see where that goes and we did this because I guess it's, it's, um, it's kind of suited to some of the work that we were doing and, and do. Uh, in relation to representing stories and identity. And so we were interested in, in how we might approach this. Uh, and so the idea basically is that there are something like nearly uh, 100,000 people, or just over 100,000 people who were killed in both wars. And they were somehow reflected in this. And so there are two things, I guess, about that. One is that we would gather soil from every local government area in some kind of proportion to um, contribute to the construction of the earth. So essentially, mm. you it's, it's sort of a community community participation process in mm. that you know you you can take a spoonful of soil from your backyard and you know I guess better you know put it on a back from a, on a on a truck and this truck will then deliver all the soil and then you'll be piled up into these two equally. I guess from form, form-wise, equally um, visually, you know, the same form, but represent different um, um, times and different um, experiential qualities within it that expresses what the, f two, the nature of two, two different wars was. I think. Yeah. So <coughs> the other, so in terms of, of that one, 
if you go into World War One, it kind of looks down. If you go into World War Two, it, it kind of looks up. So if you look at sort of like, the two different interior models, one one looks, you know, takes you to this um, a chamber that looks deep down, and the other looks up. Um, that explores the nature of the two different wars. We got shortlisted. Um, down and to three. Down to three, and um, we um, went through the the, net, the the second stage and and worked it up and we had engineering and all that kind of stuff, which is great. Um, but yeah, ultimately we must have come second. And uh, we, um, but they didn't build the thing anyway, so it's still not there. So um, I'm not quite sure what happened to the. <coughs> the whole process, but <coughs> I think you know these things are quite political um, and requires you know several million dollars of funding to to make it so.